For information on upcoming episodes, merch, and other ways to support the podcast, follow us on Instagram at Jacob Stanley Podcast or on Twitter at Inappropriate F. And check out our website, jacobstanley.com, to submit your own story to the podcast. Got a doggo and want to support the pato? Use the affiliate link in our show notes, BarkBox.com backslash Jacob Stanley, that's Jacob with a K, and sign up for BarkBox. Each month, BarkBox brings your dog more than $40 worth of toys, treats, and chews tailored especially for your pup, curated from each month's unique themed collection. Is your puppers into Stranger Things? Would they dig on some Bego waffles or a demo bat? Maybe they prefer the wizarding world of Harry Potter and want a sorting hat or a headwig of their very own. So click on the link in our show notes, BarkBox.com backslash Jacob Stanley, that's Jacob with a K, or go to our website, JacobStanley.com, and use the link provided to help support our pod and bring monthly dog joy right to your door. Oh, and by using our link, you get an additional month free. That's BarkBox.com backslash Jacob Stanley. In October of 2011, four college students disappeared in the woods near Porter Township, Pennsylvania, while researching a documentary on children's author Jacob Stanley. They remain missing to this day. Last month, their recordings appeared online. In an effort to aid in the investigation, the families of those missing have agreed to release the following sound files. If anyone has information on those missing or the identity of the person or persons who uploaded these files, please use the contact information provided. Anything submitted may be used in future episodes. Certain materials referenced in this podcast, including the published works of Jacob Stanley, are currently protected under U.S. copyright law and may be redacted. For legal reasons, some names have been withheld and voices altered. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the podcasters and participants and do not represent the official policy or position of the Iphigenia County Police Department of Porter Township, Pennsylvania, or its associates. This podcast contains adult themes and language. Listener discretion is advised. Warning. This episode discusses suicide. For support and resources. Please contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline or your local crisis center. Folder labeled 012 Rough Cut, Episode 12, Tell Me a Story, The True Life of Jacob Stanley. WTV New York. If your child has been to a school book fair recently, chances are they came home with one of this author's scary books. Our guest tonight's first anthology leapt to the top of the New York Times bestsellers list. Over the past few years, he has become a household name. The gap between Alvin Schwartz and Stephen King. The devil is among us, friends. He's among us in the form of a writer. may have struggled during its initial release in 1977, but now tell me a story. Under the bed, that's over my head. How many parent organizations complained that his work was too sophisticated for children? Traded your homes and your children's minds. Cobb Anthology, Tell Me a Story, Moonless Sky, and Other Friends. Sold out from bookstores in mere minutes. Stanley Books ranked on the American Library Association's 100 Most Frequently Challenged Books from 1981. Stanley's books promote disobedience, violence, and the occult. Lord have mercy. His Tell Me a Story collection. The Floor That Creaks, The Closet That Speaks, and The Tiptoes That You Walk On was released in 1986. Check your children's rooms. Check their bookshelves. Check their backpacks. I do think his final book, released in 99, TMAS, The Nightmare, The Dream, The Places Between, was by far his best work. work. has been described as subversive and dark. I simply describe it as genius. It is my pleasure to introduce you. Please welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Jacob Stanley. Mr. Jacob Stanley. Author Jacob Stanley. Little to nothing is known about the life of this elusive author. And since 1999, Jacob Stanley seems to have completely dropped off the face of the earth. Until a short, two-line obituary appeared in a small-town paper over a year ago. From Boo Labs and Red Cup Media, I'm Tolan Reed. And I'm Avery Fisher. This is Tell Me a Story, the true life of Jacob Stanley.
Is everybody okay? Just going to be. I mean, you don't have to be okay. Nobody has to be okay. You feel how you feel, but I just, we have, nobody has said anything yet. And I don't know how anyone else is feeling right now. And I'm sorry. Um, what were you saying? I was just asking how everyone was. I don't know. I'm in this really weird place of, I guess, shock. They accused us of murder. Murder, Avery. I know. I couldn't even do frog dissection in bio. I know. Avery, we meet ducks. I know. What? It's never we saw a duck or we saw a dog. We say I met a big duck today. I met a raccoon. We meet ducks. I get it. What if her ME report had not come in when it did? That's what I want to fucking know. We would have gotten arrested. Arrested, arrested. I overheard someone say it might have been suicide. Who said that? I don't know. I was inside the interrogation room, and someone was talking outside the door. The place was packed with people from the search party. It could have been anyone. Was it suicide? The way they talked to us about it, it definitely didn't seem like they thought it was suicide. Yeah, the cops seemed to be throwing a bunch of random accusations around to see if anything would stick. And maybe when nothing stuck, they decided to wrap it up quickly and stamp suicide on it. Could anyone inference anything from their questions? Inference? We haven't slept in two days. I barely remember my own name right now. Could Jane have died by suicide? Oh, RJ, I mean, it's possible, but the way they were questioning us, I don't think so. I don't think it was suicide either. If they couldn't pin it on the outsiders, they just didn't want to spend any additional effort on it. Right. Needed to just shut it down. Oh my god. Was that call from her? What call? The morning of the fire. We woke up and the phone was ringing and no one was there. Could that have been Jane? Shit. I forgot about that again. Fuck. Ugh. Me too. Completely dropped out of my head. Do you think that will help the police? Should we go back over there? What, like, right now? RJ, we can't go back over there. Those locals in the station were seconds away from turning on us. The only thing missing were the pitchforks and torches. Let's just get back home where we have the safety of distance and lawyers, and then but we can... what if that information could help them right now? Okay. 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 Let's call from the road. Yeah? Get a bit of a head start? Then we call. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Works for me. Let's pack up the car. Wait. Where are the boxes? What boxes? Shit, where are the boxes? Oh my god. Did the cops... No, no, no. Guys... Uh, oh my god. No, 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 no. Guys, don't worry. I did it. Did what? what did you do? I did that. Remember when we got back and I came up here to set up the interview with Wallace? Barely. Well, I told him about finding the manuscript and he told me about Jane and bam, that's when the cops pull up. So he offered to come and get all the Stanley stuff so it couldn't be confiscated. Huh. Well played. But he didn't get the manuscript, though. What? It's still here. Look. I hate that thing. Oh, thank God. It's still inside. If it's inside. Why would he take everything except the manuscript? He probably didn't know this was it. I just said manuscript. He must have thought it was in with the other stuff. There wasn't much time to explain things. That does look like room decor. Well, for this place anyway. Yeah, I would have noticed it. So we should call him, right? I'll do it. No, it's okay. I can do I it. I said, I'll do it. Put it on speaker. Will you calm down? Okay, but just be sure to ask about the- Open! Stop. Shit. Hold. We should really be recording this. It's already on. What? It's like second nature at this point. Perfect. Check, check. Okay, so... Shit, I don't even know how to start. It's already started. Uh, okay. We just got released from the police station. It is 6.45 p.m. What day is it? No one knows. Fuck it. 
We were taken in this morning at approximately 7 a.m. after having returned to the homestead from the Stanley House upon finding what we think is his long-lost manuscript, a manuscript so salacious it was rejected by his publishers and has remained a buried secret ever since. Forget it, he's rolling. So for about uh, 12 hours, Jesus, it's that long, uh, we were questioned about the death of Jane Stanley, the niece and only living relative of Jacob Stanley, who has been missing for the past several days. Her body was found in the woods near where Stanley's FMC camper was parked. And uh, Jane's ME report came back while we were being questioned, and it evidently showed she died the day they had us in for questioning before. Little up there. Avery. Sorry, I'm, I'm So tired. they tossed us out of there. We don't know how she died. They didn't tell us anything. And, uh... uh don't forget about the grave robbing. Right, uh... Evidently, Jacob Stanley's grave was robbed a while ago, which is why when we were there, the side of it was, uh, open? Is that how I should say that? Sure. Uh, so, they were also very curious as to why we went to the graveyard, but as I said, the second they got Jane's ME report in, they tossed us out of there. I'm sorry I told the trooper about the graveyard. I didn't think it would be used against us. Well? So Wallace said he'll bring over the boxes. Uh, oh, if we want, he'll even do the interview. Great. He's sorry he missed the manuscript. When he looked through the stuff and realized it wasn't there, he panicked. Whatever the Wallace version of panic is. Anyway, he's basically down for whatever we need. He even promised us dinner. Oh, hell yeah. Um, we don't have time for dinner. I will pass out if I don't get some food before we leave. And trust me, you want him to bring you dinner. Yeah, you want that. He makes the best mashed potatoes I've ever had. Okay. Did he say when he was going to get here? Soon. RJ, you good with that? <sighs> yeah. I... I kind of really need food, too. Excellent. So we should prep for that interview? Are we really going to try to do that tonight? Why not? Might as well. Okay. The notes are all on this morning's sound file. Just needs to be transcribed. Chuck. <laughs> on it. Hey, want to review files? Organize the last few days? You read my mind. I should check to see if we have anything that could help the police with Jane. Good idea. There could be anything in those sound files. What should I do? Uh, this. Get to work on opening the box. Even after you figure out the pattern of the puzzle, it will still take forever to get it all the way open. So focus on that, I guess. Yes, that's perfect. Can you pass me that? Sure. What if you... Hey, 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 sorry. Jesus. I still don't know why you won't let me take a hex out of that thing. I don't want to damage whatever's inside. I'll figure it out. I'm good at puzzles. I'm sure you are. Chuck, where the heck is Wallace? I don't know. I thought he would have been here by now and be already be on the road. In the state you're in? These guys need sleep. Just one more night here won't kill you. But driving like you are, just might. Where's Avery? Still working on sound files. She had a phone. Couldn't stop. I thought we could maybe find something in the recordings that would help the police with Jane. But I didn't find anything. You know what just popped into my head? Jane told us Stanley was married. I completely forgot about that. He was married? Oh, Lord. Mom, you know about that? Can't say I did. Oh, and Deb, get this. Stanley's remains have been stolen. What the hell? Yeah. If... They were, in fact, Stanley's remains. Right! Fuzzy Melon! What? Harry Line? That doesn't help me. Guys, you have to listen to this. Evening, Avery. Uh, evening, Miss Loretta. Um, that day at the quarry, I think someone may have put that hole in our tire. What? Shit! That's right, we still have a spare on the car. How far can you drive on one of those? 50, 50 miles. miles. Just, just listen to this and bear in mind, I did not record this.
didn't learn manual. Never did. Wish I had God to teach me. If my mom had tried to teach me sick, we would have killed each other. Avery? My mom did teach me to drive sick. That was not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was not pleasant to ride in a car with. At all. Our mom said that in common. No, no, she was just drove constantly to slam my foot on the ground because I had a brush. <laughs> well, whenever I drove, all my mom would do was yell and shoot her arm out across me at every stop sign. Like, I was a child and how did you spell that? Same. And the thing is, I drive like a nana. I'm not safe to drive five miles under the speed. Oh my god. Fuck. Probably checking someone fucking around. Yeah. I'm good. I don't think I'm Jane yet. I hope so. What the hell was that? I don't know. It was on one of the memory cards. I put it at the end of episode 10. What? It lines up with that day. You used it? How did it, how did it, how did we have it? You were at the car the entire time. Chuck? I did not do that. Did you? No. Oh my God. Neither of you did. Here, listen, this, this is from the same file. You guys are in this recording too. Shit. Now I did not record this. And I know you guys did not record this because we are all in the recording. Also, RJ and I were the only ones with gear and the rest of it was locked in the car. Fuck. Okay, so I put a filter on it to get rid of all the background to try to see if I could tell who it was, but I, I have no idea. Here. Can anyone tell who that is? Deb? Miss Loretta? No? Nothing? You guys have protection? What? Mom, stop it. That right there is a threat. A threat! I can get this close to you and you don't even know it. Mom, please, you're scaring them. They should be scared! Look, I don't want to worry you kids, but... She's not completely wrong here. Deb, get that pearl-handled one from the china cabinet. It's tiny, but it'll do. Oh my god, Mom, I'm not giving them a gun. But I got bear spray. If it will stop a bear... What about Tommy's Beretta? Mom! You're right, that thing's too heavy. Get him the Glock from the laundry room. How many guns are in this place? Mom, no guns, okay? Yes, thank you, Miss Loretta, but we would not feel comfortable. But if you're offering us bear spray, we'll take it. Seriously? I'll get it. I have my keychain, Mace. Oh, me too. But it might be expired. And I have my pocket knife that I carry when I run. What? Tell him be a doll and grab me my pocketbook from the Davenport. The what? Couch. Here, Miss Loretta. Here. What's that? It's a blackjack. Again? Hold the light end like that, and swing the heavy end. Aim to the temple. Oh, okay. Here, I got two cans. Yeah. This is not a toy. This shit will blind you, so don't be dumb. Thanks, Dad. What is happening right now? Uh-oh. <laughs> I might have broken your toy, Tolan. <sighs> Holy shit. Whoa, well, man. I'll take that. Thank you. Good job, Ms. Loretta. Yeah, Tolan's been at it for hours. Well, Tolan, what's in it? Oh, it's raining hammer handles out there. Knock, knock. What is it, Doc? 
Wallace Embry's here for you. The cat's already out of the bag on that one, Doc. <laughs> Miss Loretta, dead. Hey, Wallace. Evening, Mr. Embry. Well, now, the four of you look so rough, y'all make a freight train take a dirt road. Thanks. <laughs> no disrespect, but dang. I figured it would be bad, but not this bad. March your butts upstairs. I come bearing gifts. Good, because I am starving. Don't go make none jealous now. But I didn't forget you two. Brought you some of my homemade cider. I know how you like it. Like it. We love it, Mr. Embry. Thanks, Wallace. After I get them set up, I'll grab it from the car for you. Thank you, Mr. Embry. <laughs> Shit. I didn't realize it was that late. You take good care of these ones right here. Oh, well. Scout's on. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. God, yeah, thank you. And if you change your mind, there's a shotgun in that front closet right there. Mom! <sighs> Little bitch has the hearing of a bat. Lovey, would you put the kettle on for your mom? Want to make some tea? You eat up. And for God's sakes, get a good night's rest, please. Don't worry, Miss Loretta. I'm pretty sure we're leaning that way. Good. Now, Mr. Wallace, don't make me wait too long for my cider. I wouldn't dream of it, Miss Loretta. Hey, man, you need help carrying anything? Don't you dare. Get on upstairs. I'll take care of y'all. Thank you, Wallace. Yeah, thank you. It's been a hard one today. Yeah. I bet. I bet. Tolan? <laughs> hey there, buddy. Ah, ah. Take it easy. Sorry, I just, this is it. We have it. The manuscript? I'm almost too scared to touch it. <laughs> well, hot dog, congratulations, but I'm really happy for y'all. Thank you. When I noticed it wasn't with your stuff, I almost had a heart attack thinking I'd lost it. Don't feel bad. It's here. Right here. <laughs> All right. Come on now, let's get some good food in here. Where'd everybody go? They're all upstairs waiting for you. Come on, let's get you up here. Upsy oh, daisy. Ugh. You're all wet. Yeah, man. It's raining cats and dogs out there. Whew. You are really out of it, ain't you? It's been a long day. Long well, few days, more like. Yeah. You got your box? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Now. I see it. I'll be right up.
End of folder labeled 012 Rough Cut, Episode 12, Tell Me a Story, The True Life of Jacob Stanley. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the podcasters and participants. If anyone has information on those missing or the identity of the person or persons who uploaded these files, please use the contact information provided. Anything submitted may be used in future episodes. Tell Me a Story, The True Life of Jacob Stanley is a bi-weekly podcast produced by Sylvia Whitaker. Please rate, review, and subscribe. If you have had your own unexplainable experiences in Iphigenia County, Pennsylvania, we want to hear from you. Please submit your story via our website's tip line, www.jacobstanley.com. Stories may be featured in future episodes. Follow us on Instagram at Jacob Stanley Podcast or on Twitter at inappropriate F. Episode 13 will be released Wednesday, October 5th. <laughs>